Welcome to the Justin McDonald Show this week on Talkcast PDX. I'm hanging out in the studio. We always have different guests, you know, come in sometimes. Most of the time, though, we're doing the Zoom call. Yeah. And today I have a good friend on with me today. His name is Huggy. Did your parents name you that? No, no, that's, you know, my background's in radio and I was on Live 55. I, I used to go by Taco Dan. Taco that, Dan. That was my first radio name. I was <laughs> so it it's changed uh, drastically since the the ten years I've been in radio. But <laughs> Taco I'm, Dan was my first one. I'm so glad you changed. Yeah, <laughs> Taco Dan. To it was it, it was Taco Dan and Enchilada Eddie. So it was the late night snack. So it kind of it kind of went hand in hand. But over time, you you have to you you kind of got to change with the. That's elements. something. It sounds like something I would have programmed back in the early 90s or something like that yeah i've been in the radio business for 35 years man Damn. i've been doing this since i was 15 Damn. Um, but i kind of I, I got away from the radio business as well uh now i'm in the digital world and of course i want to talk to you about that but you're a man of many talents you do a lot of different things man you're all over the place you got the band yeah. you got your new show mm -hmm. um you're continuing your quest and your journey on sobriety, which we're yep. going to talk about in just a little bit. But tell me a little bit. So you left Live 95.5. You don't have to get into the reasons of why. Yeah. Um, but you, you did some great work there. Where were you before Live 95.5? So I started radio in Las Vegas, Nevada at a place called Hot 97.5 Kemp Broadcasting. And I was like doing weekends and uh, overnight, just like when when. It's it's way different now because like yeah. I don't know how you started in radio, but I'm assuming it's a lot like me. I started on the street team, man, and then I yeah. I, I convinced them to let me do uh, over overnights on the weekends, and it's a it was a 24 hour live station at that point, and they didn't even have they wouldn't the program director at the time wouldn't even let you. Uh, put the board in manual you had to fire off oh, every sweeper <laughs> dude um, I like so that I, guy i like that guy you're working I, I, it keeps it, working it it, it, it it like showed me a lot about how radio um like the grind of radio because i went from like i said the street team to overnights to producing a morning show to like getting pulled off the air for a while because it was a hip hop station and I am not hip hop. <laughs> and like, um, whoops, I, I, lo I love, I love, I love the music. I just wasn't really fit in the format. So as I was getting pulled off, uh, like my hours were getting cut back a little bit on air. Mm -hmm. I was starting to do promotions stuff and it promotions is really easy to do in Vegas because everything, everybody's trying to give you free comps. Vegas is promotion. Yeah, it's it's it, it is one big promotion that it hit in the face. But I really I, I've always wanted to be on air. And the, that little bit that little taste I was getting in weekends and overnights was like it was too addicting for me, man. So I put together a tape of like all the really, really shitty phone calls that I had from the overnights <laughs> and the weekends. And I started sending out demos or air check tapes. If you don't, if you don't know what they are, it's just like a show compilation. And sure. um, were they actually on cassette? No, that was C it was it was actually yeah. MP3s at that point. I have a CD of my first one somewhere, but I I don't even have a fucking CD. I have a cassette. I, I have cassettes of my air checks, man. That's how ancient I am. Um, so you send them out, you get some response. I did. I, I got I got a response in uh, in Boise, Idaho. Was my my second uh, good market. Uh, my, it was it was a really really good stepping stone. It, it's now uh, Town Square Media. I was at 103.5 out there, and it was like it was still nights and it was perfect for me because it's a college town. And I was, you know, I really got my feet wet there and I, I did a, a bit to get on the radio, which was higher huggy. And I was like panhandling nice. for my job. And that was like, I was like, dude, I, that was when I really, really fell in love with radio because there was still people out there like that wanted to do bits and like, you know, yeah. or we're, we were kind of getting back into the good radio because for a while there, you know, I, I come from listening to shock jocks, Eddie and Jobo, Man Cow, all, all the really, oh. really big shock jocks. And it kind of fell off there for a minute. Like they started hiring these kids that they would have to like, <laughs> you know, read this. this they're, I call them liner jocks and we all call them liner jocks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was really happy to find uh, uh, my first home that really wanted to do personality driven radio. Now in Boise, Idaho, if you don't know, it's big, big. Um, it's 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 very mormon <laughs> you know yeah it's pretty it's, mormon there people i don't think they realize how mormon parts of idaho is it's it's 
I had never like I had no idea what that even meant. You know, I'm from I'm from, Chi- I'm from Chicago, Illinois. So like you know, starting starting to you know learn more about how that culture was in Boise. While it was a college city, because Boise Boise State, mm-hmm. um, it, it there was a, a whole other half of the listening audience it wasn't just college kids, man. Yeah. Um, and more people listen to me my, me on the radio just to to fucking see what i was going to say next kind of like the howard stern aspect of it yeah what are you going to say right because they were like you they were they they had they had a couple other personalities before me that were falling on that line of reading and being able to control them and i was just like i'm a punk (laughs) yeah i want to try things i want to do stuff so i was on i was on the radio out there for about three years and uh this man named phil becker heard my show um and he's now the president of programming for uh, alpha media and he ended up uh flying me out to portland i made sure it was at the end of a book always remember like if you are under contract which i didn't remember and i'll get into that in a second or didn't know at the time like um make sure i, I wanted to do to do the due diligence because in radio there's two different types of th- books there's the uh, diary markets and then there's ppm and uh Boise was a diary market so I it's like three months on and a couple months off and then you go back into it so I made sure that I was out of a book when I went to visit because at the time that was about three years and I was I was about ready to get out of there like my I was feeling like I was stagnant you know a little bit Your expiration date was coming up you're like time I I needed to do something different and be under a different manager and, and learn and so I had this opportunity so I flew out to Portland um met with Phil, met with Live 55. Kind of the rest is history after that. The one thing I will say, if you are a young, ra- this was in my 20s, if you are a young radio personality under contract, <laughs> make sure you read it. Um, and, yeah. and uh, you know, I flew out and I, I came back and when they found out, I didn't tell anybody I was going out to Portland. Mm-hmm. I, I, when I found out that, uh, uh, when they found out that I went out to Portland, it, it, it turned into a whole shit storm. So yeah, uh, just make I've sure been in that situation before. It's, it's so weird because like at a young age, you don't know, like you felt like you just, can I curse on the show? Can I, yeah. You can uh, curse all you want. Kind of just, you kind of feel like you fucked up. Like, you know, and they met, they let you know that too. It's like, you know, you're under contract yeah. and you know, yeah. why would you do this? You know, this is, we, we looked out for you and brought you here. And I'm just like, damn like i didn't think about it like that but you guys aren't really treating me that well anyway right i I I was humbled by the the opportunity but i gotta move on man otherwise i'm gonna be stuck in boise forever for for the rest of my life and you don't want to be stuck in boise for no no now that it now now that that i like look boise as a market and a good place you know for those who have worked there for a long time i feel like it is a transitional market for those that are destined to go do more things right It, it was good to get my feet wet in that market and I, I would honestly go back. I go back often now because I made a lot of good friendships there, man. Yeah. And uh, I have, you know, I have a, a lot, still a lot of good friends there today that I, I, I used to go back and write music there often when I was doing uh, this DJ thing called TV TV. And I love Boise. Like, it's a great place to raise a family. I don't have a family. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, a yeah. good, it's, it's a lot slower pace than, um, than Portland was. So when I, when I came to Portland, <laughs> you know how Portland is, Justin. Like, Portland's it's... Uh, it, yeah. It's, own thing man especially at that time like you know now it's 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 changed a lot especially with the pandemic and after um all the protesting and everything downtown looks a little different but i love what portland's about and i, I you know the keep portland yeah. weird thing it, it's not as weird as it was prior but it's still portland has something beautiful to it man and um so I, yeah i came here and i've been here for six years now and i was at la 55 yeah. for six years and i recently just left there so yeah, you just left there. I mean, your path, uh, your journey into the radio business. My, you know, I did. I started when I was young, fifteen. Mm-hmm. You know, high school had a radio station. My mom was in the business, so I kind of got. Uh, you know, that's. I kind of always knew that's what I wanted to do, and some people don't. You know, some people get into it uh, by accident and, and f- fall in love with it. We're all a bunch of junkies and nerds. You know, we we love we love what we do. I mean. Um, I can remember fond memories as like a seven or eight year old kid walking into a radio station and smells like coffee and cigarettes. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, so cool, you know, to see all the guys and, you know, working, but um, you know, I worked my way up through the ranks as well, just kind of like you did. I, you know, I started in a big market, you know, I started in Seattle and then yeah. I kind of worked my way down. Actually, I went to smaller markets and was a manager and then worked my way back up and, 
Uh, good times, though, in radio. I think radio is in for um, some drastic changes over the next few years. You just saw that Intercom changed to Odyssey. Yep. Um, they've changed up their branding and stuff. I, I saw the writing on the wall there, and I knew that was coming. Um, There's constant great. changes, man. I, I saw I saw a, um, we were peak broadcasting in Boise, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all of a sudden I came back on a week or after a weekend, and there was a <laughs> meeting, and we got bought by Town Square, and everybody yeah. was kind of like, whoa like that was my first like mm-hmm. what the fuck is going on do i still have a job type type situation because you don't know like everything changes quickly yeah. um and, and you don't even realize that it's changing because you're not on there's like a bunch of different tiers to radio there's people that are on air there's the sales people there's the <laughs> gms and then there's the people that own the fucking company right you don't know what the people that um and you shouldn't know. I mean, I would like to know what the what the corporate people are talking about, but you don't know until it happens. And yeah, I mean that. As far as I'm concerned, corporate radio, you know, it's a bunch of bullshit. They've you know literally killed the industry. As far as I'm concerned, the creativity and the things like that. You know, national contesting and all this crap. It. I believe and firmly believe in local radio. Yeah. And, and I miss that. I remember, you know, back in the days, you could only own two stations. You could only do this. And it was really competitive and everybody's fighting for the dollars. And so people stepped up and the product was really good. And then it focus was on personalities. Yeah. When they, things when like they, that, when they up the Once limits, consolidation when, happened and people started cookie cuttering things. It went away when they up the limits to how many companies can have, or how many stations a company yeah. can have like <laughs> that. I was like, that's a lot of fucking stations. How many stations were in at Alpha? We were at our max. Well, you, I mean, I would consider Alpha as a lower tier broadcast company. I mean, it was like 250 stations and yeah. most of them, I'll be blonde, mediocre, you know, not, uh, you know, anything special or anything like that. They it's, have a few great properties. If, if I was a company like Alpha, I would get rid of all my inventory, keep 25, 50 great producing stations and focus on content uh, creation and, and they, they were making buying a, real creativity a thing. They were buying a lot of clusters. And like, I, I saw what they were doing, especially because I came in there as soon as they started to buy more and they wanted to be, they <laughs> wanted to be competitive with like how many number of stations, like be the third biggest broadcasting company. Yeah, that's so like, that's and it's like, though. you're kind of biting off more than you can chew at that point, because it's a lot of micromanaging small markets that aren't even kind of, Uh, they don't have ratings, you know, like not, not, not that they can't get ratings. It's that they're not even um, in Nielsen, you know, they're not, they're not, they they, they just don't, they don't register. So let's, uh, let's use a radio term and kind of segue out of uh, um, talking about corporate radio and where it's going. And yeah, I I know where most of that's going. And no, totally. We could, we could talk about that for hours. Yeah. I'm a firm (laughs) believer of the mom and pop thing though. If I'm an owner, I don't need a house on the hill and $3 million a year. I would rather spread the wealth, you know, keep myself a half a million, but then spread the wealth to everybody to make great product. And that's something that's something that is gone. That's something when when I came to the, when I came to that, your studio not too long ago and you said that, and I was like, that's a good guy right there. Cause you were talking about being a general manager and, you know, um, investing in talent, you know, you'd rather have this certain amount of money because you wanted mm-hmm. to be able to make these people happy because you don't want disgruntled workers walking in and I, you, know. you know not making the money that comfortable money you know like um not even the like the it, it it's it right. is a it is a money game but i liked that you said that and, i mean uh, it's always something i strive for as a general manager i was a general manager for over 10 years and i always tried to be not the highest paid employee right i, I wanted to be in the middle I, i'll make mine on the back end right i make my money you know, someday down the road, I'm doing sales too. Cause you know, general managers have to sell. So, right, right. and I'm on the air, I'm doing everything, you know, I clean the bathroom shit. I don't give a shit. I, I'm here to win it. You and never want to be the highest paid employee either. Cause yeah. there's some, there's some things that, that, you know, you're the first to go. And I'm, <laughs> you know? not the, I'm not going to be the kind of guy to sit there and tell you stories about, Oh, you know, way back when, when I worked with show and show, we did yeah. it this way. Fuck that shit. I want to see, don't tell me what you did for me yesterday. Show me what you can do for me today. Right, That's right. my slogan. I love That's that. I'm I sticking love that. to it. But let's segue. Right. So what uh, you're you're talking about, where uh, you know how I see radio going <laughs> in this direction of like, um, because I'm not in it right now. You know? Right. Me neither. Um, I, I don't I don't know what what my future is, and that's what's dope about the future is. Yeah. You, know, you can't you can't control the past. You got today. You know, I getting into top forty radios. That that's where I was. 
um i saw i saw the back end of it and i always saw djs as tastemakers okay Mm -hmm. like the people that would show you know new artists or like back in the day when I, I was just watching an aretha franklin movie or or some it was like some some dj locked himself in the uh in <laughs> in, a, in a studio and wouldn't let his program directors in you know the theater of the mind thing of, i'm playing this song and this song only because yeah. it's the best thing ever love it you know i love that aspect of radio and it's not like that anymore we're we're told what to play mm -hmm. and um yeah. as as top 40 djs and so and, and we're, we're no longer curating it's it's somebody curating for the the dj to curate to the people like we don't have that decision and right um so good, I good example of that marco collins do you know marco collins i don't know so marco collins ran uh, 1077 the end in seattle in the early 90s okay he right. broke every goddamn band um that came out at that time from Nirvana to Sheryl Crow. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And he also had the foresight and the futuristic looking into the crystal ball situation to look at electronic dance music as a, as something big. And back then it wasn't really, you know, it was, oh, fucking techno, but so, you know, right. then it became such an art form. It's so great. But guys like, I like guys like him, you know, they saw the future, you know, you, you talk about that old school radio guy, you know, playing the record i remember when he locked himself in the studio and played pearl jam's follow-up album without the record company's permission right know? right you know and he bounced around and stuff and you know talented people find a way to keep going keep moving forward you know marco's been open about his uh, battle with sobriety um you know he's been sober for years now um you yourself have had a battle with those demons and are currently battling um, that a little bit yep. in your life. Um, how many days now have you been sober? Ooh, yesterday was 131. So I'm 132 days uh, clean and sober now. Um, let me tell let me, let me tell you, man, Go like, ahead. Go ahead. I, it, while I'm a performer first. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what radio was for me. It was a platform for me to perform. Yeah. And, you know, over time, especially in, in with a bigger company like the one I was with, Alpha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had really, really a, a good station that was performing very well, including my show. And yeah. what sucks about PPM <laughs> is is that you get ratings every Wednesday, right? <laughs> and yeah. either you're gonna hear you 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 hear when you're doing bad, but you don't when you're doing good. And you know, it, it, it's a lot of pressure, man. And oh, yeah. I was dealing with the pressure in the wrong way as far as I was getting older. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm only 31, but I was doing it for every day, uh, doing a four hour show live. A lot of people track. Um, yeah. I was doing a live show for four hours a day, even though it's only 15 second talk breaks, you still got to be on top of your game. And I was also DJing in clubs every night. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> so that's I was your toll right there. I was. <laughs> I was trying to get my rocks off performing on two separate ways. And the only way I could figure out how to do it was I found this drug called cocaine <laughs> and yeah. uh, it, 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 it was about a three year run for me, man. And with cocaine comes, comes alcohol. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I fell down a really, really dark hole towards the end four months ago. And um, it, it was just, it was rehab was scary yeah and that scared me into wanting to continue to be sober and that's it, it's just a really really slippery slope it's a disease man it's a somebody said this at an AA meeting a couple days ago was like um it's 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 technically an allergy i don't i i was like <laughs> man that's kind of an interesting like concept to think about it like it's a development and like this person got deep like when you hear some of these stories in AA yeah. you know it's like damn that person is thinking about it like that but it is a disease that i'm always going to have and you know it's 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 you got to deal with it yeah it's, and and I, i'm dealing with it in 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 a good way and i do i do a lot of posts to keep myself accountable at, fir at first at first i was like am i doing this and sounding too preachy but the more i the more i did it like every few days um the more i realized that you know it's helping some people you know it's yeah. it's, it's it's uh it's somebody 
like myself or you know i i watch a lot of russell brand videos because he he's a he, he's he's fucking funny to me and he's, he's he, funny man and he's, he's positive going, he went through it as well and his positivity yeah. that he spreads through his his videos and his posts like made me think well maybe my audience and the people that you know i mm -hmm. try to entertain might need this help as well and that's i i always like apologize for it like sorry if this is ranty or whatever yeah. but then I get a lot of like positive feedback on like, you know, private messages, you know, how, that's saying that I helped somebody. Yeah. And that's really at this that's point. That's got to be, that must make you feel really good though. If, it makes me feel good and it makes me feel scared too. Cause like, you know, you don't, especially so early in my sobriety, I got a really long time, you know, yeah. still working on myself and still making my way through the steps. But, you know, it, it's scary because I don't want to say the wrong things to the people, you know, and it, because i'm still new you know the yeah. best thing i can tell people is there's free help out there and they're called aa meetings and mm -hmm. you can they're they're free to everybody and right. i would i would start there don't jump into rehab right away unless you're fucking like really in need of it <laughs> because rehab is a scary thing dog and like <laughs> it I, is I, even I've rockstar, several people through that you know? rock stars recover and i love that that somebody said that to me right before i went in and um That's that kind of like that kind of helped because i've always wanted to be you know, the person, a person that has a voice for some reason, and I never knew what it was going to be for, you know, I, I talk like, I always do radio. It's not for me. It's about them. You know, I was a lot, yeah. I was big in phone calls. I was helping people for at least a small portion of time, hear themselves on the radio and just goof off instead of talking about <laughs> the Justin Bieber's of the world or what's yeah. going on in politics. I was always, I always thought about radio like that. Like, help these people escape. I wanted to pr like provide that escape. I was always a goof off. <laughs> it's it, it, and like, that's the thing too, is I created yeah. this character. I was huggy, you know? Yeah. And huggy, you start to develop as you get older your pers <laughs> and your, your persona doesn't change. You get stuck in like, man, I got to be this persona like this. Now, if I, you know, if the opportunity presents itself to do it again, I, I I'm reassessing. And, yeah. um, this is like, this is honestly the first time where I can, like that I've publicly with somebody talked about. Well, that's good. And, you know, and I think it, it's good to hear that message. Just know that if you are listening or watching this, it, being sober is cool <laughs> and it's wow. hard, but it's fucking that's worth it because you're worth it, dude. That's and right. That's, cool. that's the best I can sum it up. And uh, so you, you've gone, you're, you're going to, AA, you're doing the steps, you're, you're doing those things, you know, making amends, you're doing all those things with people. And, um, and then you're also, you know, you continue to heal on yourself. One of the ways that, that some of us heal um, is we occupy ourselves with the things we love, yeah. like music or videos or whatever. And you have started a new show, yeah. um, which I'm actually I, I, I'm kind of a fan now because uh, you're playing the kind of music that I like. <laughs> And uh, it is pretty cool that, that I know you. And, you know, we, we actually didn't really know each other that well at Alpha. We, we no. passed each other quite a bit in the halls and we'd say hi once in a while, but I was in a different part of the building. The and khaki I'd always, corner, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I'd always roll by the Live 95.5 side, be like, oh man, you guys got so much fun over here. And yeah. I'm stuck over here in the news department. It sucks, you know. <laughs> but you, you've actually moved on and so have I, and I'm doing things I love like podcasting, you know, I'm running TalkCast PDX and doing some other fun stuff on the side. And you have this new show that you have started. Tell me a little bit about the show and uh, when when it airs and all that good stuff. Yeah, um, it's called Saturdays S A D. So it's ah, like it's sad. An, yeah, it's emo and pop punk. Um, it's it's music that I've grown up on, like the Blink One Eighty Twos, the Brand News, the Taking Back Sundays of the World. Yeah, it's 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 a very niche show. Um, That's and okay. It's, it's it, but it's an it's something that I love. Um, it airs every Saturday at 10 a.m. That's when it comes out and you can listen to it anytime you want. Um, but it's a very music focused show. I just added my buddy Joe Olson on there because um, we, get, we get to goof off a little bit more and talk about like stories from, you know, shows and parties that we used to go to and like to really help relate it and bring it back to the core of, of punk rock music. And um, I, I, I love that there's a, a format like that because mm -hmm. like, I can choose the music and really hit the nostalgia factor 
and talk about the nostalgia factor, even though I'm a big firm believer and it's not nostalgic if you're still living it. So I'm still living that <laughs> shit. Saturdays is just a super cool way to be able to become and get back into being a tastemaker. Again, I, I feature a lot of new bands that I find online and um, I let them know that I'm doing it so they can help promote themselves on something cool like that, because it's, it's just, it's just a good way for, for, me to be able to introduce bands that i that i've found and bands that i love and, and talk about that and i'm glad that um that there's that platform out there still because i couldn't stop even after you know I'm, I'm only i'm i'm out of i'm out of a gig right now so i created my own gig and that's, that's awesome. something that's been super important for for my sobriety as well to keep myself busy so so Huggy, the show is called Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Saturdays. Right. You can follow us on uh, all social platforms at Happy Saturdays. S A D is how we spell Saturdays. Um, and this is the the episode five drops this Saturday, <clears throat> which will be. Uh, I'm also in a band called Twins. It's a screamo. I was just going to ask you, what about your band? <laughs> yeah, it's a screamo band. Um, we we we're like a drum and bass, but with uh, emo music. So we call it drum and breakup or dump step. If you're into that, we really blend the two genres. Um, like I said, we're called twins. Check us out at we are twins music on all social platforms, but this Friday um, on <laughs> everywhere, we're, we're dropping a song called wolves. Um, and that's, that's been another thing that's really been helping me uh, stay the course on, on my sobriety because I listened to the album that I wrote while I was on drugs and it was angry. <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. people are going to start hearing that and being like, uh, I hope he's okay. But I wrote that a long time ago, dude. So uh, check out, check out the podcast and definitely check out my band as well. Awesome. Uh, Huggy, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's always a, a pleasure to chat with you a little bit and uh, we'll promote Saturdays and uh, <laughs> maybe we'll get together and we'll do something here too as well down the road. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time. All right, Huggy. Take care, my friend. All right. Bye, dude. All right. Bye-bye. All right. It's the Justin McDonald Show. Join us next time right here on Podcast PDX.